It's are going up in the Tiber municipality of Port-au-Prince. The work on the latrines began on Wednesday, February 24th and was scheduled to be completed in around three days. It's been a month and a half and Tiber municipality in Port-au-Prince is still reeling from January's earthquake. The damaged city hall hasn't yet received any attention and staff must work at makeshift offices nearby. The shortage of public toilets has become a serious problem after the quake. The city hall had eight toilets before the quake, which have all been damaged. Ziji is now building simple lavatories for quake-affected areas like Top Air. Squat toilets, commonly found in Haiti, are being built. Workers first dig a large white hole in the ground. If you look at this now, we're digging till we get to a depth of 1.8 meters below ground level. This hole will hold 4,000 liters of excrement. This is a public toilet, so it will be full in about three months, by which point a sewage truck will come and take away the human waste. Built on Tabea government-owned land, the eight lavatories constructed by Tsiji are not far away from a dump site. A team of street cleaners have been mobilized to clean the area. After they learned that the toilets are for the people, the cleaners removed the rubbish with impressive speed. The new public toilets that were scheduled to be completed in three days will give quick survivors a much cleaner option the next time nature calls. Francisco Mortoa is a city 70 kilometers north of Sao Paulo. City volunteers in Brazil have been conducting monthly free clinics there for more than 10 years, giving to the many residents in need. Thanks to the support of local volunteers, last week's free clinic was able to treat 349 patients. Free haircuts were provided as well. A long waiting line wraps around E.E. E. Alegria 2 school, where City Brazil is holding a free clinic. It exemplifies the region's health care problems. Ziji has been holding free clinics in Francisco, Morado for more than 10 years. Well equipped, the clinics provide high-tech ECG monitoring, ultrasound scanning, and pap smear testing, just like most hospitals. The volunteers also take time to explain Ziji to the crowds, touched by Ziji's universal love. Many local volunteers helped make the event possible. Working together every month, Brazil's city volunteers safeguard the health of the locals here in Francisco Morado. The unconditional love of city volunteers was evident in the Philippines when a fire occurred in Barangay Besa of Quezon City in Metro Manila. Residents said the incident was caused by a child who forgot to turn off the stove while cooking rice. The risk of destructive fires is highest in the month of March as the weather gets hotter and the electricity supply... Immediate plans to take action. Meanwhile, in the latest updates from Haiti, Siji volunteers were invited by Jordanian peacekeepers to assess the situation at a local orphanage which used to be run by a woman from Jordan. Back on Sunday, the Siji team carried out a disaster relief assessment in Leogani, which has not yet received much international attention. Leogani is a city 29 kilometers from the capital with a population of 134,000, most of whom are farmers. 10% of the residents were either injured or killed, and 90% of their homes were destroyed. Aside from shelters and other aid, the city will need new schools and hospitals. With much to do, volunteers visited a tent camp in Leogani. Made of flimsy material hung between sticks, the tents could hardly be called tents. The homeless residents said they were low on food. As rain gently falls on Haiti, it's not greeted as welcome relief, but with a sigh of despair by disaster victims whose lives will be submerged in further chaos. This plot of land surrounded by sugarcane fields is near the epicenter of the quake in Leogani city. Drying on the ground is clothing that was soaked in the shower. It's hard to imagine how these disaster victims keep going. To describe this as a tent camp is a compliment. Most people here are sheltering under bed sheets hung between wooden sticks. Only a minority have canvas over their heads. When it rained last night, a lot of parents took their children to this tent, which is at least covered with a plastic sheet, and gave them shelter from the rain. 
Around 560 families of 1,850 people live in the squalid conditions of the tent camp. 508 is the number of this tent, like a house number. This home is about wide as my arms when I spread them out. Lift the flap and inside, the area is around 3 square meters. These people lost their homes and jobs to the tremor. They say their children are hungry and even the water used to cook their rice must be used sparingly. The luckier families have thin bean soup to eat. Saji volunteers who are assessing the situation in this overlooked tent camp are saddened by the plight of the victims, but have noticed the difference in their attitude compared to people in Port-au-Prince. In port au prince perhaps because there is aid there, the problem is uneven distribution. Some areas have things and some areas can't get anything. People who don't get the aid feel resentful. Here, the residents are gentle. They don't surround us and ask us for things or get agitated. In fact, Leo Ghani has been helped by some international aid and medical agencies but possibly due to the wide area of devastation, relief supplies either run out or are not able to get through. There will always be forgotten corners. Suji volunteers patiently listen to the survivors and assess how to take the next step. In another tent camp in Leogani, you can see a noticeable improvement in the facilities and general situation. There's even a shower room here. And a breakfast stall is in business. There's egg, onion and bread here. This is the first time I've seen anything like it. The environment in this camp is very good. 90% of the homes in Leogani were destroyed and residents are too frightened to return to the remaining 10%. You could say that the entire city of 134,000 people is living in tents. Apart from aiding the residents, the city government wants schools and clinics to be built in partnership with NGOs to restore the city and give the inhabitants their lives back again. From Haiti to Indonesia.